On September 3rd, 1996, Tanya's son was pronounced dead. He was only four months old. Doctors said that the infant suffered swelling on his brain, two ocular hemorrhages, and oxygen deprivation to his vital organs. Tanya immediately became the prime suspect. She was arrested and investigated on murder charges. But ultimately, she walked free due to lack of evidence. Now, Tanya says her life has been a living hell because everyone, including her own family, calls her a baby killer. Did you kill your son? Absolutely not, Steve. Um, I made a lot of mistakes. I was really young. Um, I did drugs when I was pregnant. Dakota was born two and a half months early. Um, he was born addicted to, to uh, crack cocaine. Um, he spent six weeks in the NICU. Um, during this time, of course, CPS was immediately involved. Um, they gave me a whole bunch of things that I needed to do, parenting classes, um, to comply with and get clean and get into treatment, to comply with whatever they asked me to do. Um, I did that. At six weeks old, I was able to bring him home. Um, even though I brought him home, I continued to use. I was in the same environment, around the same people, continued to use. Um, one night, we got pulled over. We were in our town next to ours. We got pulled over by the police. Um, Jerry admitted to the police that we had been using cocaine. Um, he was arrested on the spot. Um, they let me go home. Um, I, wasn't, I was booked, but I wasn't taken to jail because he had priors for thefts and drug use. Um, he went to jail. I had to stay at my mom's. Um, a couple weeks later, um, there was no place for us to stay like at my mom's, so we had to sleep on the living room floor. A couple weeks had gone by. On the night of the 1st, September 1st, um, I was on the floor in the living room. It was about 9 o'clock at night, and I, there was no place for him to sleep. And because he was a crack baby, he cried a lot. There was no consoling him, even feeding him and changing him, keeping him warm. That wasn't, that wasn't enough. He would cry. And I knew that was part of the deal. I had done this damage. There was nothing I could do. All I could do was try to do the best that I could at the time. There was a recliner that was right next to me in the living room, and I had the recliner up, and I had him on that. Um, but he was crying a lot, even though after I fed him at midnight, he was just crying, crying. Finally, 2 o'clock in the morning, he settled down, fell asleep. At 4 a.m., I got up to feed him again. He was fine. He was eating and happy and alert, smiling. But then after I was done feeding him, I tried to settle him down to go to sleep. He did not want to go to sleep. Um, I was waking everyone up in the house um, with his crying. So I found, uh, looking around, trying to figure out what I could use, I tried to look for a drawer because I'd heard people had made beds out of drawers. Um, but all I could find was this big, huge suitcase, like a big two-foot by three-foot suitcase. I opened it up. On the deep end, I put a soft, puffy blanket. And then I put him in that, and he wasn't crying anymore. He was just kind of, eh, eh, fussing. So I was like, okay, he'll be okay. He'll self-soothe. And so I put him around the corner. This is, here's a bathroom right here. This is all open floor plan. And then I'm right here on the floor. I'm within earshot, OK? So I, I drifted off. He was you know, just fussing around. I drifted off. Um, 8 o'clock in the morning, my mother woke me. And she was standing over me. And she said to me, Tanya, something's wrong with Dakota. And I jumped right up. And I noticed that his skin was very gray. And he did not look good at all. Um, I'm like, Mom, we have to go right now. We're not going to wait for an ambulance because the hospital's five minutes away. OK, so we drive to the hospital. And, and while well, I got him on my lap, there's no car seat, OK, because I don't have time for a car seat. I got him on my lap, and I'm rubbing his chest because he stopped breathing in my arms. So I'm rubbing his chest, and I'm talking to him, please, maybe little short breaths in his nose and his mouth, trying to get him to come back. We arrived to the hospital. I ran in the hospital holding him in my arms running, screaming for somebody to help me. The nurses came out. They took him. I had to wait in this other room. Um, then the, they came in, and then the doctor had told me, well, we think this was a SIDS-related event, but, but he was, you know, you, you found him before he'd actually passed away. So we got to go in and see him, and he looked fine. He, um, he was beautiful. His color was back, and he was smiling. The doctors came in and said that he had suffered um, suffered greatly from the, the period of time that he had gone without oxygen. Um, so they said that his brain was swelling and that they couldn't stop it and that he was going to pass away. There was nothing they could do to, to save him. So they called um, my husband, who was in jail. He was my boyfriend at the time. And they gave him what they call a deathbed visit. So he came. The doctors explained to him what had happened. And we stayed by his side. 
um, until he passed on September 3rd at 504 p.m. When he left us, I um, donated his organs. Um, later on that evening, a family member um, of Jerry's had showed up, which I had very little to no contact with, um, showed up at the hospital. And because of the stuff that I was doing, I would totally think the same thing. Um, because of the stuff I was doing, she mentioned to the doctors that, you know, maybe, maybe Tanya has done something to hurt this child. She didn't know me, and she had nothing to do with Dakota. Um, so we went back to the place that we were staying, and I was sitting outside, just dealing with everything in my mind. The next thing I know, there was a bunch of unmarked cars pulled up really fast. And they got out and they said, you need to come with us. Um, they didn't handcuff me or anything. And they split me and Jerry, put Jerry in one car and me in another car. And on the way back to my county, which is about 45 minutes away, they were asking me questions like, did I ever get angry with my son? Did I ever spank my son? And we're talking about a, a four-month-old baby. I'm not spanking a four-month-old baby. So I just thought this was ridiculous. And I'm like, what is all this about? And they said they had reason to believe that I had done something to hurt him. Um, the question I do wonder, um, why did you put, when you put him in a suitcase, why did you sleep in a different room than him? Because of his crying. He just cried and cried and cried. Yeah, but you're his mother. It wasn't mother. a different room. It, it was all, yes, I am his mother. But he was waking everyone, and everyone was complaining to me about his was crying. Was everyone waking sleeping everyone. in the room on the floor? Me and two other family members were in the living room floor. OK. You making know, a bad decision. I think you I made did. a lot of bad choices I when did. you were on drugs. I did. Did you murder your baby? No. I don't want to believe that. I certainly did not. <laughs> what, what do you, why do you think your son died? I think, well, after knowing now, I think that he must have gotten up into the corner of that suitcase where he couldn't turn his head to catch his breath. And I think that's what happened to him. So even though the police questioned you, you never were arrested? No, I was never arrested. Okay. Some of it, you know, you weren't charged. You could move on with your life. But with you, your son is questioning, right. hey, did you kill my brother? Right. When he calls you a baby killer, how did that affect you? Your own Shock. son calling you a murderer. It was shocking. It was shocking because I, I never thought that he believed that. What I didn't know was that his father had told him that when he was 12 years old. And he never came to me and said, hey, mom, you know, did this happen? Um, his father apparently was intoxicated and sat him down and told him that, um, I got to tell you this. I hate to do this to you, son, but your mother killed your brother. And he never. But there was a custody battle going on at that time, Steve. OK, there was a lot. There was a lot going on. Um, Jerry had actually given my son cocaine when he was 12. I took him to court. I had to leave Jerry to get clean and sober, Steve. OK? And once I did, I fought for my other children. The night uh, that you put your son in a suitcase, were you doing drugs that night? No, I didn't do drugs when I wasn't with Jerry. OK. Well, let's bring Jerry out. I blame you. You're gonna go to hell, bro. You put my son in the No, 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 no. Shit. No, 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 man. You put him you, in the suitcase. You, you, you did this. You, you put did him. It. Can you relate to this story? Go to www.stewilkos.com to get my help. We're here to find out whether you killed your son. That's right. You're right, Steve. OK. I'm gonna ask you one time, and then we're gonna drop it. Yes, sir. Did you give your son that's here today cocaine? Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay. 12 right. years old, too. What Hold kind of father are you? I raised those boys while your ass sat into drugs for 12 years. Why? You were just shooting up heroin. I, I didn't shoot between nothing. Between your toes. I got a light attack. I'll take it on it's the light detector okay. test. My son told me. I'll take a light detector test. Yeah, why, you need did, to. why did you do that? Steve, <sighs> my whole life, she has pulled. Just no. Just answer the question. Yeah. Because I was a piece of garbage, man. So okay. Are. Let's move on then. You're a piece of garbage. Um, <laughs> Do you think that she had something to do I with I do. What? And what, why do you believe that? Because she is unstable. Uh, she is a liar. And I've seen how she is on drugs, man. I've seen it firsthand. She's, she's, she's frustrated. She, she doesn't know how to control herself. And every time Dakota cried, she did nothing but get frustrated about it. Well, let's bring out Kanawha. You know, this isn't about the two of you. This is about my brother. 
okay? Right. We're not here to throw shade. Right. We're not here to throw shade. Right. You stop right. that. Right. I'm not here sorry. for that. I'm sorry, I love no, you. No, you stop. know why I'm here. No, because I still have to talk. You know why I'm here. I still have to talk. I don't know who you are. I don't know. Okay. I, there's no way to know. There's no way to know until this test, these you test results come out. You know I love you. This out. wasn't not your fault. None of this was your fault. What he told you was not your fault. Yeah. And that you grew up thinking that. How do, was I, not how your do fault. I know that you weren't strung out? That's why I'm here You were strung out on crack two weeks That's before this happened. That's why I'm here today. But now you're dropped cold turkey, right? How do That's I know that you didn't put him today. in a suitcase and shake him because That's you were mad at my I'm father? Here today, how do I know that? How That's do I know? why I came here. Well, we're gonna find out. We are gonna find out. We're gonna out. find out. But the truth's gonna come I, I out. Everybody's gonna know. Feeling. All know these bridges, angry. if you kill him, Listen, all of your bridges are burnt. It's okay. Everything. I didn't, Kanoa. If this happened, you know, 20 years ago. Two years. Your mother was a completely different person, strung out on drugs, making bad decisions, and she did do this. I'm gonna be upset, Steve, because one, she knew that I was looking for answers. Right. And you know what, I wouldn't have gone to police if you came to me and you told me. But I didn't, so I can't come to you and tell you anything because I didn't do anything to hurt that baby. I never laid okay. a harmful You're finger You're married out. now? I am. All right, Tanya, um, you came here, and I'm, I'm, I'm believing you're here today all stemming from your son. Your son wants to know if you murdered his brother. And we asked you, prior to his death, did you shake your four-month-old son? You answered no. Did you smother or suffocate your four-month-old son? You answered no. Did you close the lid to that suitcase with your four-month-old son in it? You answered no. Did you cause any of those injuries to your four-month-old son before his death? You answered no. The results came back all the same to each question. And it came back that Tanya told the truth. This, this has affected my life greatly, okay? And I want to tell everybody, I am also clean and doing the best that I can to live a good life. Um, right. What, uh, what's your feelings now, knowing that? Relief. Yeah. Definitely a big relief. I don't have to look at my mother like a murderer anymore. That's nice to know. <laughs> I, would, I will say, um, if you battle addiction, and you, you both say you have, and you both say that you're beating it, we're all happy to hear that. Wish you all the best of luck. Stay sober. Don't go back to your old ways. Good luck to you. Thank you so much.